He suffered a broken nose in the match against Bristol City last weekend. That was the only change in the starting lineup, although Steve Coe replaced Kevin Watson on the bench. The Portsmouth side included three former town players, Fitzroy Simpson, Alan McLaughlin and Adrian Whitbread. This report by Tony Arnacy. Portsmouth went into the match on the back of two defeats, including a 3-0 beating at Oxford only a week ago. But they seemed determined from the start to disprove recent form. The returning Talia soon brought into action. Swindon, on the other hand, appeared intent on giving the ball away at the earliest opportunity, and a run by John Aloisi exposed the town's brittle defence. Ty Goodman's challenge inside the box was too late, and Jeff Perron's perfect chip found Aloisi for his eighth goal of the season. The damage had been done much earlier, and Goodman's desperate attempt to cut off the danger was always going to be too late. Portsmouth were working hard to increase their lead, and their tireless midfield man, Sammy Igo, was quick to capitalise on any mistake, especially when Swindon maintained their suicidal defending. This time, it's experienced Brian Burrows making the fatal error, and Igo can hardly believe his luck. It makes it quite clear what he thinks of Talia and Burrows' footwork. A careless back pass lands Talia in potential trouble, and potential turns quickly to reality. 2-0 and less than half an hour gone. The second half began with Swindon pressing strongly, but it didn't last. Prolific goal scorer Steve Claridge had the visitors backpedalling. And when Talia failed to hold his shot, who else but Igo was on hand to punish the Aussie keeper. Now are gone and the game out of Swindon's reach. Even so, they had their share of possession though Portsmouth always looked determined to add to their haul of goals. At times, Swindon showed composure as they tried to open up the Pompey defence. But just when it seemed they were settling down, they managed to produce more errors. This time, Alan Reeves failing to clear the ball under pressure and Aloysius cross brought the sort of chance Claridge rarely, if ever, misses. It was hardly Wimbledon-style defending by the normally dependable Swindon man. Swindon did pull back a goal when a flick on by Darren Bullock was turned into the path of Iffy on Euro. The one thing iffy about the goal was the callous side foot by Roddy Peddock when presented on Euro with his gift. But then came the most bizarre incident in the match. It seems to be a pain in the neck for goalkeeper Aaron Flahaven. The camera follows the flight of the ball. There's a whistle from the referee. Clearly he's given Swindon a free kick for an offence in the centre circle. Tala decides against taking it in himself, but there's now high drama unseen by the camera in the Portsmouth goal mouth. Swindon take the kick, move forward, and there's Flahaven flat on his back. George and Dar hasn't time for sympathy, but players on both sides are worried about the keeper. What's happened, says the day's keeper. Burrows calls for help from both physios. The strangest of incidents in a match Swindon will want to forget. It proved a real knockout for the Wiltshireman. Yet another misplaced pass makes a present of the ball for Perron, a good support from Claridge and another goal for Aloisi, beating his fellow Australian goalkeeper for the second time in the match. It's back to the drawing board for Steve McMahon's men. Certainly a disappointing result from Sw for Swindon, Swindon's point of view, but what about that Georgian Dar goal, Leroy? Amazing goal, wasn't it? I mean, the keeper looked like he was fast asleep, and at one point it looked very worrying, but then uh, he gets up, George puts it in the net, uh, which he should do, he's got, he's got his professional footballer, but it, it did look worrying at this point, but then he gets up, like he's woken up from a deep slumber, and he's a bit like Cinderella. 
Well, I must say, I mean, we do believe he went to hospital after, after the game and it looks like he's got a viral infection, but hopefully he'll be all right. Great. But certainly bizarre circumstances. Let's hope he's OK and doesn't fall asleep on the yeah, job we'll again. We'll have more from Leroy later.